Hello and welcome to Blender. Let's use Blender as a video editor and let's go through the very basics real quick. Bookmark this video so you can look it up later. Make sure to subscribe for more tutorials and give this video a like if it helped. If you have any other questions, ask me in the comments, please. We're gonna start by changing the layout from default to video editing. Already it looks much more like a video editor. We're gonna import a video clip by simply dragging it into the timeline. Here it is, one video and one audio clip. With the mouse wheel I can zoom in and out, with the middle mouse button I can pan, and uh, with control mouse wheel I can also go to the right and left. With the shift and mouse wheel I can go up and down if there are many tracks. As opposed to most video editors, space does not play back, instead Alt A plays back. And I can change the size of a preview with the mouse wheel as well. The coolest thing here is that you can see the frame rate of a preview. 30 frames here and then it drops. So you know when it's actually lagging, whether it's because of your computer or because of a video. The cool thing is, if you play back the same part multiple times, the frame rate will improve because there is actual live pre-rendering, so to speak. First up, let's cut the video. I want to split it where the cursor is and pressing K cuts them. If you press space and type in cut, you can also see in the sequencer, which is what we're using, cut strips is used by K. Now I'm just gonna make another cut here with the K key. Right click to select, this is very different, and press the delete key on the keyboard and OK. I can use page up and down to jump between cuts, so I'm just gonna right click this clip, press K, right click this, press delete and enter. To multi-select clips, I'm gonna press B and drag a rectangle around them. Now to move them at the same time, I'm gonna press G once and move it to the left. And if I overextend and try to move it here, it actually jumps to the right. Let's try this again. Yeah, it actually jumps to the right, so this is useful. Now let's transition between these two clips. For this, we actually need to position them on top of one another. So I'm gonna press B, select both of them, Press G, move them on top of the other clips, release here, and now I need to add another clip which does the transition. If we test this, there is a hard cut. There we go. So we're gonna use the Add menu, we're gonna add an effect strip, and we're gonna add a cross effect. Okay, for this to work, we need to actually select the two clips we want to crossfade between, so right-click one clip, Shift right click the other clip, you can tell that they are both selected because they don't have a black border anymore, and then go to Add Effect Strip Cross. There we go, let's play this back. Now this is extremely laggy the first time, but if we replay it again... Okay, I actually had to cut off some of this and move it to the left because there was an actual cut in this clip. So let's try this again. Very nice, a bit too slow. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna just move these to the right and the crossfade automatically shortens. Very nice, maybe a little less. And playback. All right. Now let's try to do the same for the audio. So let's select both audio tracks. Those are the turquoise ones opposed to the blue ones. And in the menu strip, we're gonna select crossfade sounds. So as you can see here, a crossfade was added for both these clips. And it works perfectly. Now if we do move this around, this does not work actually. So we're just gonna undo this with Ctrl Z and we're gonna move these two to the left. And now we're gonna select these again and go for strip crossfade sounds again. Because if you just delete the keyframes, this doesn't seem to work. Here we go. Good crossfade. Now let's add some music. For this, we're just gonna drag in a music audio file into the timeline again. Here it is. Let's actually move it to the beginning. We can see by the number over here that it is now at the first frame, which is what we want. And let's just try playing this back. All right, I want to actually see the audio via the waveform, so let's go to View, Waveform Drawing, and Waveform Zone. This allows me to spot where the music starts to 
be a bit stronger, so I'm gonna just go over here, make sure that this clip is selected, press K and delete this part and just right click drag this to the left. You might have noticed that at this point the video just jumps back. This is because of the end frame set here, so I'm just gonna extend this to let's say 2500. Now this is much longer. All right, I want the audio to actually start here. So again, K, delete, drag. And of course, I want the other audio to be much more quiet because that's a bit obnoxious. So I'm just gonna right click this clip and gonna scroll down and here I can set the volume. And here I gotta be a bit careful because I used these keyframes. So I'm just gonna set it at this keyframe. Yeah, so I'm gonna use left right arrow to jump to the exact keyframe where it changes. So this is when it is yellow here. That is the time where I can change it. So I'm gonna set this to 0.2 actually because it's very loud here. And I'm gonna do it with this clip as well. I'm gonna jump to this keyframe and set it to 0.3 in this case because this is a bit more quiet. So I have to actually apply these keyframes. So when I change this to 0.3, now I have to press the I key. And now you can see it was applied in this visualization of the keyframes. Now I'm gonna do this with this as well. Correct keyframe and then 0.2. And very important, the mouse cursor has to hover this volume and I'm pressing I now. And it got applied. There it is, we can see it properly. All right, let's try it out. Okay, so there's a little bit of a problem. Okay, the preview had a little problem, but if we play it back again, it actually works properly. All right, so that worked. There's a lot more to do, but we're just gonna do one more simple thing. We're gonna add an overlay image. For this, I'm just gonna drag in an image file. This is a PNG format image with transparency, and it got added to this track. That's a bit weird. Let's move it. Yeah, let's move it further up here so we can actually show it on top of both others. So first of all, I want this image clip to be longer. So in the sidebar, which you can enable with N, I'm gonna change the length. Just gonna click and drag it to the right. And this is, yeah, I like this. But of course I want it to be on top and not replace the video. To fix this, we have to select the image clip and here in the right hand side, we have to set the blend mode from cross to alpha over. There it is, beautiful. Let's try it out. All right, the only thing left I want to do is to fade this actually in. So to fade this in, we're gonna just make keyframes again. So let's go to the first frame. I'm gonna use arrow keys for that. And here I'm gonna set opacity to zero. And I'm gonna press the I key while the mouse is hovering this opacity value. Now I'm gonna move this a bit to the right. And now I'm gonna set this to one. And I'm gonna press I again. Let's play it back. There we go. Fade. All right, for this little project, the only thing left to do is to set the point at which we want to end the video. Let's go over here, for example. So this is at frame 303. Let's move to the left three times. All right, 300. So let's set this to 300. All right, so let's export this video. We need to switch one of the interfaces to the properties panel. So I'm gonna click here and go to properties. All right, here I'm gonna set this scale percentage to 100% and let's zoom out here. Now, this is a moment where you should double check the frame rate. It is set to 29.97 frames per second and this is actually the frame rate of this video. I can double check, for example, in VLC and pressing Ctrl I and going to the codex page and it says 29.97 or I can do so in the Windows Details Properties window over here. So just make sure that this is the correct frame rate. Down here in output, you need to set a folder. I have a one MC setting the same folder that I use for the input files. I'm going to press accept and actually I'm going to write output at the end and I'm going to change the format from PNG to FFmpeg video. And in the encoding tab, I'm going to select a preset H.264 and MP4, probably the most common format. Now the quality I'll increase to high quality and encoding speed to faster. And that's all I'm going to do for now. Now I'm going to just scroll up and press the animation button. We immediately see a preview over here. We can zoom out to double check and we can see how long each frame is taking. All right, so here's the output file called output and then the number of 
the starting frame and the end frame and let's check that everything is working and it is not the audio is missing in fact there are no audio tracks oh that's because we forgot to enable an audio codec so let's set this to aac and let's just animation render again all right let's check this again and here's the audio wonderful quality seems to be fine too one audio track, exactly what we wanted. Ask any questions in the comments, many of my videos are based on people asking me questions in the comments. And I hope to see you in the next video. Until then, have fun editing. Ciao!